This is how Rebecca from Leopard Gecko Talk does her videos. Maybe I should start it like this. Hello, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that. Rebecca, we love you. Leopard Gecko Talk. Here we go, Kuzan. Are you ready? What is up guys? It is the Turtle Girl. Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the pros and cons of leopard gecko ownership. If you didn't know who this little guy here is, this is Kuzan, my Murphy's Patternless Leopard Gecko. I've had him for almost two years now. Gosh, I should have looked this up. So I've had leopard geckos for a fair bit of time and I guess I just want to make this video for those of you who are considering getting leopard geckos as pets because they're very interesting creatures but as with most animals, there are different kinds of pets for different types of people. So my hope with this video is to go over some of the great things and the not so great things about keeping leopard geckos as pets. And because I don't want to waste any of your time, let's just jump straight into some of the cons. Some of the things that might be potential drawbacks when considering owning a leopard gecko. The first thing is that leopard geckos as reptiles are insectivores. And so they must have a diet of live insects, be that dubia roaches, crickets, even mealworms. They just need to have some kind of gut loaded insect as the main part of their diet. And so if you're not comfortable with that, leopard geckos just might not be the right pet for you. So if right off the bat you're not comfortable with that, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and I'll see you on another video. <laughs> no, but really, this is just one major thing that can potentially turn a lot of people off. So just remember that if you're considering a leopard gecko. Another thing you want to consider is that leopard geckos are crepuscular. So they're active during dawn and dusk. So depending on the schedule of your day, you might not see them very often in their enclosure. I would say that leopard geckos are kind of just a median kind of display pet because you shouldn't expect to see them all that often except during those times of dawn and dusk. They're also not particularly affectionate creatures. I don't know if you can tell. We're kind of doing the treadmill walk over here with Kuzan, but they don't necessarily thrive on that physical interaction with humans. So if you want a pet that you can handle all the time, a leopard gecko might just not be it. They don't really crave that. They're not going to seek attention from you unless it has anything to do with food. Um, I mean, that kind of goes for any animal. Let's just be real here. And then also the other thing to consider is that as reptiles, they kind of have some specialty needs. The major one being that they are going to need a separate heat source as well as a thermostat in order to control that heat source because they need it to be warmer than just normal room temperature. But Honestly, outside of that, there's not much extra that you will have to provide a gecko, at least care-wise. So with that, let's move into some of the benefits. So like I was saying, aside from the heat mat and the thermostat, as far as the enclosure goes, it's not super specialized, at least when it comes to reptile care. You just need to be providing them hides and decoration, decorations, decorations and places for them to hide. What are you doing? I'm like cradling a baby. Okay, you can just hang out there for a second. They basically just need some hides to feel secure as well as some decorations to make the environment more enriching and natural. But aside from that, that's basically it. You can see my enclosure here. It's kind of evolved over time, but it doesn't need to be anything crazy. They're also extremely hardy and resilient and can tolerate a lot of perhaps beginner mistakes. Obviously we should be trying not to make those, but it's good to know that they're very hardy animals and not super duper sensitive. They're also relatively inexpensive long-term. Because you have their enclosure basically all set up from day one, there's not much else you have to invest into their habitat, unless you want to, of course, to help with enrichment. The only other major your investment is food and the cost to heat the tank both of which are pretty minimal, especially if you are breeding your own colony of insects to feed your gecko. For instance, I have a dubia roach bin. You can see how I made it up here. And that colony, I paid, I think, $40 initially for a bunch of adults and nymphs. And that colony has been going strong for the past two and a half years that I've had Kuzan. I haven't had to go out and buy food. And so it's very sustainable and low cost. Continuing with food, leopard geckos are great because they are not constant feeders. I mean, they're opportunistic. They'll eat when you give them the opportunity to, but you only have to feed them full meals every two to three days once they're adults. Babies get fed once a day, juveniles can be fed a little bit less than that, and then adults, like I feed Kuzan, about three times a week. And so this is great because on those days when you're not feeding them, you really don't have to worry about them provided they have fresh water. So they are low maintenance animals, and so if you wanted a pet that doesn't take a huge investment of time, leopard geckos are great because 
maybe bare minimum you're putting in 20 minutes every two days to just make sure this animal gets fed to make sure they're getting fresh water another pro to this is that if you are leaving for the weekend you won't necessarily have to get anyone to check in or maybe just to replace water because for short periods of time they won't have to eat. As you can see, this beautiful tail, the gecko actually stores fat there. So if they have to go without food for an extra day or something, it's really not that big of a deal. Also, as you can see, of the reptiles, they are one of the better choices for handling if you wanted to have the chance to take out your animal and interact with them. Kuzan was a little bit feistier towards the beginning of this video, but you can see He's kind of now chilled out. He's happy to just hang out, sit on my hand. So you will be able to take them out for short periods of time, maybe 15 minutes every other day or something like that to be able to hold your animal, interact with them. I would say they're relatively calm and docile. He's only tried to bite me once and I think that was because he thought I was food. They're also quiet animals. You're not gonna have to worry about hearing your leopard gecko bark or chirp or make any noise that's gonna bug you in the middle of the night. They are absolutely silent creatures. I would say that they're just relatively unobtrusive animals. They don't smell either or anything like that. All right, buddy, where are you going? Leopard geckos are also unique pets. They're different from your typical household pet that is like a dog or a cat or a hamster or something like that. It's really, really fun to observe their natural behavior, watching them hunt and eat food. And because this is a different animal than what you might typically interact with, it can be really, really intriguing to observe their behavior. They also come in many different color morphs and patterns. They can come in bright colors, they can come in dull colors. You can see Kuzan here is a Murphy's pattern list, so he doesn't have any spots and very little color, but the wild type is a beautiful yellow with black bold spots. You can get some that have none of that yellow pigment. You can get some that are super vibrant. There are geckos with incredible patterns. There's all white geckos. The few that I put up on the screen here are just a couple of examples. And I think they just make really, really fun pets for the right type of people. Now I do wanna end this video by saying easy care is always a relative term. It depends on the amount of effort you are willing to put in and it can be very subjective. So just make sure any kind of pet you get, you are being a responsible owner and caring for them as best as you can. Obviously, they rely on you for care and resources and food and all those things. So I hope this video was helpful in determining if a leopard gecko is the right pet for you. If you did enjoy it, hit the thumbs up down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and also huge shout out to all my patrons who help make this content possible. And I will see you guys next Friday. Have a totally awesome day. Bye!